ex-Mormon antichrist woman of the devil. I love that. I kind of want to get it made into a t-shirt. Hey, I'm Amy, amyloganlife.com. Um, I'm a life after Mormonism life coach. I thought it would be kind of fun to read a few comments from some of my videos. Maybe you could chuckle with me. Shall we begin? Five or six years ago, I made a ton of videos and those videos have so many views. I think YouTube might be like with my algorithm a little bit because <laughs> things have changed drastically. That's okay. Just continue to watch, share, like, all those things that helps me get my message out even more. Years ago, I used to get a lot more controversial, not controversial, shitty comments about what I was doing. And I still get them now. Like my favorite one is they called me ex-Mormon antichrist woman of the devil. I love that. I kind of want to get it made into a t-shirt. Um, maybe we can have an ex-Mormon antichrist woman of the devil club. <laughs> want to join me? All right. So I did a video on you can you can leave the church, but you can't leave it alone because if you've been out of the church for any amount of time and you've ever spoken words about your experience, people will tell you you can leave the church, but you can't leave it alone, right? Like, come on, seriously? Do they not understand what it is like to live your whole life and give your time, money, talents, love, life choices to the church? Like, really? And then just boom, poof, gone never talk about it again? Have they never seen someone who's left an abusive relationship and felt hurt and pained and betrayed over that? Have, and they want to talk about it so they could be understood? All of those things, you guys know what I'm talking about. So here's an example. David said to me, Amy, I feel you are a sincere person trying to do what you hope is right. So at least he kind of started with something nice. I do want to express to you that you have unfortunately accepted claims, representations, slanderous reports, and attacks against Joseph Smith as truth, and, has, and that has undermined every everything you believe in. There are answers to every concern and question that you've ever had, but you want to obtain these from reliable and truthful sources. <laughs> okay, honestly. Okay, let's just talk about Jeremy and the CES letter. Okay, his whole point of writing the CES letter is because he had questions. Things were not making sense. So what did he do? He compiled his questions and he literally sent them to the CES director, sincerely trying to get answers to his questions. Do you know how many people of members of the church that I asked my questions to? Leave a yes in the comments below if, if you experienced this. Oh honey, we don't have all the answers here on this earth. Amy, those things are going to work itself later in the afterlife. Amy, I know the church is true beyond a shadow of a doubt. Here's the Book of Mormon. Go home and read it. Have you ever heard any of those things? And obviously insert your own name, right? That it, it's like insulting. If members of the church who I'd asked my questions to, which included my bishop, included people whose names I won't mention, <laughs> if they only knew the time I put into this, right? And I would imagine that a lot of that is true for you too. So to say that you have to obtain the answers from reliable and truthful sources, <sighs> tells me that they're a little more ignorant than they know. That being said, there's really only one way to ultimately know the ways of God and his truth, and that is by seeking God, God's guidance on a subject. The Holy Ghost never lies. Yada, 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 it goes on and on, like a lot. You know what I think? Trust yourself. If you're not feeling good about the church, about what you've been raised to believe, and you've asked questions and people are giving you bullshit answers, trust yourself. You do the work. Don't rely on someone else to do it for you. You dive in and you do the work. Continuing on with reading comments from viewers here on YouTube. Carlos says, you should ask God directly and don't trust in yourself. Seriously? You guys, <laughs> okay, let's back up here a minute. You have to trust yourself. What does that even mean to trust in God? Does that mean to follow blindly? Let's think about this. You have to make decisions every single day from what to wear in the morning to like no brainer decisions, but you still have to make them to what career you should have, if you should have children, if you should get married, if you should, what, you know, on and on and on. You have to trust in yourself. And I'm not talking about just matters of the spirit, whatever you want to call it. If anyone tells you not to trust yourself, that should be a huge red flag, okay? Just, you heard it here first, folks. 
You have to trust in yourself no matter what. And if people are telling you just to follow blindly, no, just no, just no. I, 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 that's all I have to say about that. So same video, this is a positive comment. Your videos are amazing and really helpful. Are you planning on making more? Yes, Stephanie, from five years ago. Yes, I'm planning on making more. Hopefully, hopefully you've come back to see them. I love your videos. Yay, you guys, thank you for actually, most of the comments are nice and positive and uplifting. And I know that they have helped a lot of people navigate over these past five or six years. And that's why I do what I do. But it is kind of fun to go read the dickish ones. This comment comes from my my video I did on my temple wedding. I did this a long time ago in front of the state capitol in Utah. It was an impromptu video, so I hadn't even known I was going to share the story. So I did get pretty emotional. I was sharing my experience of getting married and having my never Mormon dad and grandparents outside the temple crying while I was inside the temple getting married. And so I was reliving a memory and it was it came out very raw and emotional. Um, and it was I was okay with that. I'm still okay with putting it up, but apparently people had some problems with that. Here is what George George says, this is super whiny. <laughs> the temple, which I think is kind of funny. The temple ceiling is not really a wedding ceremony. There's no blessing of the rings or ring exchange. The bride doesn't get to wear her special dress. Actually I did, but I had to put all the other Mormon temple clothing on top of it. It was, it was seriously messed up. <laughs> Here I am in my wedding dress with all that stuff over it. It was terrible. But so anyway, I did wear my wedding dress inside the temple. Instead of crying that your non-Mormon family or non-temple temple going Mormon family didn't get to see the ceiling. How about have a wedding in your dad's house so he can see it? You have other options. Think outside the box people. Okay. You know what I have to say to you, George, and to other people who say that is when you're 20 years old and you are on the path and you are following it because everybody else is telling you what to do. And you've been conditioned since you were a child, you get married in the temple because you've been taught by other people that if you don't, you must have done something wrong to not be worthy to be in the temple. And when you were a good Mormon girl, that's like the worst thing someone could do. Yes, I acknowledge that that's letting other people control how I feel, but I was 20. I kind of knew nothing back then, except I was on the path, right? So this mentality drives me a little bit crazy because I just think, first of all, there's no compassion or understanding, or even for this person and people like this to see that the conditioning that happens in the church, right? They can't even see that someone like me and I'll just take full responsibility for the decision I made. Absolutely right, George. I should not have gotten married in the temple. <laughs> I should have gotten married so my dad and my grandparents could have seen me get married. And my younger siblings, by the way, who also weren't allowed to be in the temple because they weren't old enough. I just think this is such a narrow perspective. When you don't take into consideration all of the conditioning that we go through and the reason we make decisions, to say, think outside of the box, when you're so deep in the center of that box, you can't even see the side of it. You can't, you know, you can't even see that there's a, a, a lid you can push out. It makes me think, yeah, oh, there's a twilight zone with people in the box. Do you remember that? Yeah, I loved the Twilight Zone, still do. So also, that was 1990, and back then in the United States, if you had a civil wedding, you'd have to wait a year to get married, to get sealed in the temple. I wasn't gonna do that because of the stigma that came with that as well. Like, it didn't even cross my mind. Do you guys, do you relate to that? Like, when, when you're making the decisions with your Mormon head, and the Mormon narrative, you that's just what you do. Now, I know there are people who didn't always do that, and I say, great, I'm glad you had the foresight to think outside of the box. But I'm gonna say most of us didn't. And most of us who, were, who grew up in it, we stayed on the path, and we just did all the things. We checked all the boxes, and we did it the right Mormon way. This is from Dawn, same video. So this is on my temple wedding video one. You could have had a civil ceremony and then be sealed. Presenting it as if there were no other choices is not fair. It's just not fair. Listening to your videos, it's very obvious that a lot has been pushed under the carpet. Under the carpet. A lot has been pushed under the carpet. Okay. I'm wondering if you went through a divorce. Yes, decades later. Had nothing to do with the memory of my wedding, but okay, whatever. Are you ready for this? Start on page one of the Bible and read. You will find your way back home. <laughs> I'm truly sorry for all the pain you're going through. 
Heavenly Father is still with you. He still has his hand on you. <laughs> Not to mention that that's a little creepy, but um, come on, that's just very condescending to take a story that I'm sharing. It's very personal. I know I'm putting it on YouTube. There's a lot of trolls, but it was real. And it was from my memory of when I did this, gosh, that was probably, I got married probably 25 years prior to that when this video was published. I'd have to go check the dates, but something like that. And I think any time someone's telling you you need to do it differently, they need to check themselves. Because it was my experience, based on my growing up in the Mormon church, when someone says presenting it as if there were no other choices, it's not fair. Of course, I can look in hindsight and see that, but seriously, at 20, it never even entered my mind. Never even entered my mind that there were other choices because of the way I was raised. And then people will go, well, that's how you were raised. I was raised this way. It's kind of like the Coke issue. <laughs> if you remember the Coke issue, like I grew up, you we were not to drink Coke, right? And then later the church comes out and goes, we never said that. And then even amongst members and ex-Mormons in that, in that world, people interpret things differently. And so do families within the church. So in something like this, someone other, someone else's family might have said, yeah, well, let's do this. And you don't have to get married in the temple right away. And then they would have been okay with that. But that wasn't my experience. I'm sharing my lived experience. You can go make your own YouTube channel and talk about your experience. Ding. This one's kind of funny. So, uh, uh, all right. I don't even know this person's name says, grow up and stop crying. Every group has rules. You don't want to play by those rules. Then don't bitch about it. Keep out of their sandbox. <laughs> I can bitch about it because it's my story. This is what's so funny to me going back to what I said before. Like I get to talk about my story. If you don't want to listen to my story, move along. Right? I share my story because I know people relate to it. And I'm kind of having fun with this. Like this is no skin off my back, I get it. We all like to have opinions about everything, me included. I think it's just funny to me that people who are, I'm gonna assume Mormon, most of these people who criticize my channel, if they were like confident in their faith and their religion and being Mormon and all that that is, they wouldn't pay any attention to me as an ex-Mormon or to anyone else who has, you know, who's criticizing the church because they could just like be like, they don't know what they're talking about. Like, I don't care if someone thinks they, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just sharing from my <laughs> self to help other people. And so this is just funny to me. Like, why are you even here on my channel complaining about what I'm doing? Like, just move along. If you're confident in your faith and in your own church, you don't have to come along and criticize me for what I'm doing. You can, because it's kind of funny, but you know what I mean? At least I can laugh at it now. The first time when this first started happening, it did get to me a little more, but uh, one thing that creating a YouTube channel will do is help you get a pretty uh, thick skin. Oh, this is good. Are we rolling? Still rolling. I don't know how to say this person's name. You're, okay, let's just say you are has an apostrophe R-E, not Y-O-U-R, but whatever. You're so foolish crying because you think that God's kingdom is easy access. You have to work your lazy self if you want something great. Get over yourself and see beyond yourself. All I see in this video is a self-inflicted pitta party. I feel sorry for you because you're hurting yourself by being selfish. <laughs> you're short-sighted and I'm irritated watching you cry. What an identity crisis. But yet you took the time to tell me how selfish I am being because I decided to share my story and that I have to work my lazy self if I want something great. Like, what does that even mean? I'm sharing a story, something that was very personal to me, and now I'm being called lazy because that's a good thing. Something that I've learned by having my YouTube channel and speaking out publicly is that if someone can't have an intelligent conversation with me about why I left or, you know, my reasons for it, or even if they want to counter the reasons why whatever I'm doing isn't true or not, if they can't carry on that type of intellectual conversation, it's much easier to call me lazy or call me, people have called me all sorts of things. Antichrist, woman of the devil, that's my favorite. It's easier to attack the person either physically or emotionally than actually intellectually. This comment to me is just kind of bullshit. It's not saying anything. <laughs> it's saying that I'm foolish for crying because I think that God's kingdom is an easy access. 
Okay, missed the point, but whatever. As much fun as it is to read some of the negative comments on my channel, which thankfully I can laugh about that now because it's just kind of funny. Come on. The reason I do what I do is because I have received countless emails over the years. You know, I've been doing this for about six years now. Countless emails. I've listened to so many people share their story with me. None of those people are coming from a selfish, lazy, um, disrespectful, ugly place. They found themselves on this faith crisis journey path because they actually wanted to know the truth. In one of the videos I made earlier this year, um, it was called Anatomy of a Faith Crisis. And I kind of tell my story in narrative form and I'm speaking from a place that really resonated with a lot of people. And so I wanted to share some of the comments on that video. And if you haven't seen it, go check it out. We put a lot of time and effort into that. And I'm really proud of that video. It's, it tells my story, but as I've said before, we sing the same song. So my words are your words. And that's why I did that video in that way. It's a little bit of a poem form. It's a little different than the, the other videos you find here on my channel. Someone, Susie says, another great video, Amy, thank you. I've learned to recognize my own voice now. And I love hearing what I have to say to myself. My path has been so similar to yours based on what you've shared. Thank you. And uh, Susanna says, "You wow, you told my story. You found our relationships are conditional. That was a quote from the, the video. Someone else says, a faith crisis is actually a gift in disguise. Keep rocking on, my friend. That's what Jerb says. Um, Kim says, I loved it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I underwent a faith crisis and now I'm out returning to my old Christian faith. Let's see. Ignorance is bliss, but the truth will always remain the truth no matter what that may be. Love your story, Amy. Thank you for that. That normalization, I needed that beautiful video, Amy. You are awesome. Epic video, Amy. Southern boss lady. <laughs> A fellow ex-Jehovah's Witness. That's what I mean. We do speak the same language. And that's what I so love about this whole journey. And this is why I'm not stopping. This is why you're going to keep seeing my face if you stick around. Uh, and I have a few fun things up my sleeve for interviewing people and, and maybe expanding the anatomy of a faith crisis and maybe including other people in that because we do have stories to share. And however you got to your faith crisis and wherever you've landed, even if it's just a touchdown before you take off to go land somewhere else, is your story's just as important. I just happened to create a YouTube channel because I couldn't handle thinking someone was going to feel alone because that's where I felt. And so I'll take the, the, the negative that comes at me because the positive is so much greater. It's so much more fun sharing my story and helping people navigate this path than keeping my mouth shut. So if that means I have to put up with some bullshit along the way, I will for surely do that. So I just, I want to just thank you. Thanks. I can't believe, I know I took a hiatus for several years and that's probably why my YouTube channel took a hit as far as viewership goes. This is always, ever since I went through my faith crisis, this has been my calling, my mission in life, so to speak, is to help people and to create a career around it and to truly get to work one-on-one -on -one with people and help people when they can't make up from down or they've had severe relationship damage, personal damage, you know, to their psyche and to the way they show up in the world to be able to work with you guys, whether you're just taking, you know, the content that I provide for free or you're working with me personally, that's what, that's why I do this. I want you to benefit in whatever way. And when you're ready to take it to the next level and work with me one-on-one, -on -one, that you'll know when you're ready for that. If you're ever wanting to do that, of course, that invitation's open to you. I share some of the negative ones just so you can kind of have fun with me. I have to laugh at it. <laughs> I have to realize that I get it. All types of people get to uh, leave comments on YouTube. When I was scrolling through a lot of these, I'm like, wow, because some of these I haven't revisited in probably five or six years. I'm like, most of them are good. And you know what? That's my philosophy in life. I think most of us humans on this planet are amazing, wonderful human beings. And you know, I used to teach high school. I was a high school teacher in Provo at Tempview High School and Payson High School back in the late 90s, mid to late 90s. And when I would tell people that I taught high school, they would say, oh my gosh, is it terrible? <laughs> And I would look at them and I would think, no, it is actually wonderful. 
I loved my students. I loved it. Yeah, of course there are some difficult students every once in a while, but that's life. It's, it's the same no matter what profession you have, no matter what. I loved teaching. And as you can tell, <laughs> I still do that. I still do that when I work with my clients. I teach principles. I teach tools. I teach things that help you better your life, just like I did back in high school. Maybe different subject matter. It's still that arena that I love to be in. I love to teach and work with people. It lights me up. So I just thought this would be kind of a fun video to read some of the, the funny comments that I deal with on my end and share with you obviously some of the positive ones that make my days sometimes when I'm struggling myself and wondering why I'm doing this and when I have a down day and I have to remember why I'm doing it. I do go back and I do read your comments and they, they make me happy to know that they've helped you in your life. So leave a comment below. If you do have a question or something that you'd like me to address in future videos, I love any suggestions that you can give me. But in the meantime, head over to my website, amyloganlife.com and go grab some more free content. Grab my 10 post Mormon life hacks and you don't even have to be Mormon to appreciate them or ex-Mormon. I've had some people grab them, not even people who've gone through a faith crisis, but just said, wow, that really helped me just navigate this situation that I'm going through. So it's good stuff. All right, that's what I got for you today.